left to the, it's left to themselves so things go from bad to worse. Right? That's what it is, right? Entropy. 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 Yeah. Yeah, entropy. Left to themselves, things go from bad to worse. So are humans there to keep things good? And do we? I mean, I'd say we generally do. We haven't set off nukes yet. Well, yeah, humans are the only things that, things that create order. And in, 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 under edge, the most normal interpretation of entropy. Ooh, we're talking about order. Okay, here we go. Listen to this. I don't even have to look at the notes, but I'm going to just cause make sure. So I was watching a nature documentary last night, right? Mm-hmm. By the way, the more you learn, we talked about this on the first episode. I said, the more you learn, the conversation's more intense, right? Yeah. Essentially, let's use the reservoir metaphor, right? Right. The stronger your reservoir becomes, <clears throat> the more, like, synapses and crystallizations and connections and associations you can form. Like, when you're, yeah. if you understand something, as you watch something, you can analyze it cut with this thing. Like, I'm, we're, we talk a lot about the unconscious and good and evil. That's, like, our two favorite things to talk about, I'd say. Yeah. Right? So when I'm watching the nature documentary, now I really have a strong ability to cut it with, oh, this represents this and those two things. So really, to be educated in a lot of things is very important. Yeah, it's weird how quickly these things spiral out. Like, uh, like a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I started, um, whenever I saw a picture online of something that I thought was cool. Yeah. I would just save it. I started saving it. Mm -hmm. And you can look at the pictures over time how much, like, better the taste get, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or even just you. with me just taking pictures of nature, you know? Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. thing. Because it just spirals out. The, like, the different aesthetics spiral out and interact with each other after a while. <laughs> so we were talking about, what, what did we say about order just a second ago? We were talking about entropy. Yeah. And how order can and by a second, I guess let's call this sort of like a, a momentum of order. That order just, that once order gets moving, it can kind of just, it can move faster and faster and build on itself more and more. That's true, it's sort of like a machine. And that's the complementary that the will? to entropy. You know what the will is, right? Um, um. His name Oppenhauer? No. All right, so order, right? Yeah. Here's something that's interesting. All right, imagine a giant teeming freak jungle. Right? Yeah, I was watching this nature documentary last night. Right, it was great. It was or an <laughs> amazing time. <laughs> imagine the most freaking cr oh, dude, there was some crazy shit. There was these birds and shit, bro. These yellow birds. There's crazy stuff in this world. Shit looks like aliens all over the place. Right. It's crazy. Okay. Imagine the most teeming, just vicious, insane jungle of all time. Yep. Just absolutely thick. You can't even walk through it. It's just, like, filled with life. Yep. Just constant competition over each other, right? Mm hmm <laughs> If you look at it, from a bird's eye view or from a camera panning in from like a drone or something, right? It sort of is like this giant thing of order. It seems to be a, a huge mass of order. There is an order to it and there's symmetry and beauty to it if you look at it from a bird's eye view. But if you're walking into it, it's like total chaos. Monkeys flying at you, birds calling at tigers. And Bugs and plants growing in one day and dying in one day and growing and redying and regrowing in one day, but then you zoom out and it's like pure, perfect, amazing harmony. That's kind of interesting because before we we kind of came to the conclusion that nature was and animals were kind of chaos, but think about that, you know. If you're if you're in it, it's chaos, but if you're observing it, it's order. Well, um. There's different conclusions you can draw from that. Here's one. If you're, um, if you're, okay, so, so we say animals are chaotic. Animals have no conscience or morality relative to humans. Mm -hmm. Relative to inanimate objects, they have more consciousness and more morality, more potential for morality. Mm -hmm. Um... 
So, so you'd think then animals would produce some small amount of water compared to humans, in a way. Ah, so just the jungle is their amount of water. Yeah, I'm thinking that, and, and this is there's this second thing, which is um, have you ever heard like real like medieval music? Yeah. From the real mid, from the not late Middle Ages, yeah. not Renaissance, but real Middle Ages music. Very small amount. Yeah. Well, um, what you'll notice about it is there's this funny thing. You might have like a conceptualization of like what music from a certain nation is gonna sound like, like mm -hmm. Spanish music. You might have some idea of what that's gonna sound like, mm -hmm. as opposed to Irish music or uh, or German music, right? Mm -hmm. But when you listen to music from the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. from Spain, from Ireland, from Germany, mm -hmm. they they all sound way more like each other than they'll sound, than what's your conceptualization of what that nation's music ought to sound like. Okay. Like they they all sound very different, almost foreign, and you know the Spanish music doesn't sound Spanish; it sounds weird and medieval. Okay. Same with the German. Same with the Irish. Okay. So what you say at uh, so, some conclusion I drew from this for after a while mm -hmm. was I decided when music's less advanced, there's this baseline sound it has, and instead it just has these like hints of like the later music, mm -hmm. like this hint of Spanish music inside of it. I can actually, I have an example of this, this is a traditional Venetian okay. tune that I can play where okay. it, the point is it only sounds the whole sound so it just sounds simple and kind of folky and not really like anything except for two notes that sound distinctively venetian or whatever okay you see what i mean mm -hmm. like this little seed yeah i get it it's music. like to me it's like king crimson like it's kind of shitty but there's moments where it's like they're touching on something better not quite the same thing okay this is a bit more touching on this is a bit more about identity and like a baseline thing that is before identity Okay. Um, and this is what I think of with this uh, jungle order. It's like it's really you can when you look at it, you can see what are essentially seeds of order. You see the, like the the canopy and the sun and the yeah. clouds. That's seeds of order. Yeah. So given a million years, humans or whatever would come. And create real order. Yeah. Or given a million years, anyone that's what it is could be an uh, intelligent order. creature yeah. that can create order. Yeah. You're right. That is what it is. But if you're in it, it's chaos. And I feel like going into the chaos to get the elixir. I thought when you go into it, it seems like chaos. But if you zoomed out, you'd see this space thing, and it would be giant. And this tiny little thing would go into like a ball of that seemed to have some order around it. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So like a waterfall, if you're in a waterfall, it's like ah! But you can if you look at it, it's very pretty and it's like, okay, gravity causes it to go down, there's order to that, and then it flows this way. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's another that's the other interpretation. The other big one would be that. Alright, so uh, when did I mention the will? The will? Yeah, when did I mention that? What did we say before? Oh, that order tends to grow like a machine. Right? Oh, yeah. Like cogs in a machine. Uh, the will, I believe, was Arthur, Scho Arthur Schopenhauer, I believe. And essentially, and this is, again, proves that there's sort of these undefined concepts that you can always tap into, all humans can, because it's sort of, essentially, I always think of it as Rogan's speech, his little four-minute speech that was really popular about um, that the universe seems to want uh, constant um, competition and improvement. That you knock down a city, it gets rebuilt. You knock down a forest, it grows back. You know what I mean? Right. And that's what the will is. It was essentially Arthur, Arthur Schopenhauer, I believe. This concept that there's just this driving force in the universe, and it's like a wave, and we're just floating down it, and there's nothing you can do but accept it. It was very different from, uh, like, the Uberman stuff of... Ubermensch. Ubermensch. Uh, what's his name? Nietzsche. Well, Nietzsche. Where they, they really want you to pave your own path and that sort of thing. But 
Yeah, the will seems to be a reoccurring theme, and I think you described the will well, in, in that it's not as, so much of a linear line as it just kind of exponentially grows. Is you know, there's a snowball effect with order. Yeah, snowball. Effect. Like watch a city grow, it's like, and then it runs counter to entropy. Yeah. So that so it's not it doesn't always snowball, but if there's no entropy, it snowballs. Yeah. Well, more like entropy happens unless there's order. That's just the thing. Entropy happens to orders all the time. Okay. Hmm. So it's like entropy versus the will? Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah. Um, and those are the two forces that ma maintain that there's always order and chaos. Jesus. And it's thought wow. that the will, you might say, is... I, I would say is created by the sort of... It is sort of a collective force created by individuals. Whereas entropy yeah. is a force of nature. I mean, I think we're kind of slightly mystifying the will, because I think the will was more like just this universal force that moves things forward. But yeah, I mean, let's 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 say it as this, because that seems to be we actually really just kind of crystallized. I mean, I'm seeing it in my head like entropy is like dragging back, and it's like a push pull effect. Yeah, yin yang. Yeah, or like I always think of it as like two space dudes floating off in space, but they're tied together by like you know how they always have a tie. Yeah when they go Tether. space walking yeah. and like one of them's trying to get back to the ship and the other one's like chasing a blue star okay I always thought that's a cool metaphor it's I'll like the, like that Meyer family episode where the Pritchetts were dream or were mean and the others the, yeah, were dreamers um dreamers and realists yeah it's sort of like dreamers and realists but yeah, it's a million things it's genius you know Yin Yang's the best. Y yeah, well, Yin Yang is actually pretty cool. Let's mention that for a second. Because I realized I actually kind of put to words what Yin Yang was the other day. Mm. And it was, um, and this is what I said. I said, so when we talked about chaos and order earlier, we talked about how chaos is conflated with nature and order is conflated with human, human force and civilization. Mm -hmm. Life, right? Um... So, uh, that's not really something that we, you know, we don't, we take that for granted, but it's not like just necessarily true that chaos, that the chaos and order distinction mirrors, mirrors the uh, civilization and nature distinction. Mm -hmm. But we say that in art, the two are conflated. We see that in art, right? Mm -hmm. So we say maybe there's like a sort of platonic form that embodies these two things. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you understand what I mean by that? Like, these two substances, order and civilization on one hand, and chaos and, um, chaos and, uh, nature on the other hand. You did that wrong. No, I, no, I did it right. Okay. Not, I'm not presenting the dichotomy. I'm oh, the okay, chaos. order, civilization. Have, they chaos come from the gotcha. same platonic form. Yeah. In a sense. Or they have yeah. the same substance that they're made out of. Mm hmm And I think... This is where yin yang comes in. I think yin yang is the recognition that there's a force y yin <laughs> that create. I don't know. I didn't think about which one's which. Honestly, yin. Check it before the egg. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, where there's like one, where there's one force, say yin, that creates some. Um, that creates both order and civilization and wow. other things too. And then not one force, Yang. Get behind me, Satan. What? It's sort of like get behind me, Satan, kind of. What? Well, Alex Jones says get behind me, Satan is represented by a comic, a comet, where. Keep saying. You have the comet here. All right. He says that's God, right? Yeah. And then coming off the comet's tail, Satan's behind him, and he says, he, he just is really stoned, and he says this is what life is. It's this like tadpole sperm comet thing that just moves around and it's good and the coming off the tail say it's behind it so you're saying there's one force that is yin right yeah and it's inevitable that yin is by with it yes yeah well yeah yeah that's that's part of the concept of yin yang and that's chicken before the egg who came first well actually it's not in that case i think we can say yang came you first th but order yeah, chaos chaos came first yeah Think so? I think we can say so because order comes with life, which had to develop. 
So I think that we have a background of chaos in which order spawns. Mm. Alright, so that's no longer like get behind the second. Maybe it is, I don't know. God could have been spawned out of chaos. Damn, I wanna play Smash Bros. I'm gonna play that game in like two years. <laughs>